to discover that witchcraft and Freemasonry had so much in common. However, in white witchcraft, followers dismiss the biblical concept of Lucifer. Freemasonry goes so far as to actually call Lucifer God. In the words of sovereign pontiff of universal Freemasonry, Albert Pike, Yes, Lucifer is God, and unfortunately, Adonai, the Hebrew god of the Bible, is also God. And the true and pure philosophical religion is the belief in Lucifer, the equal of Adonai. But Lucifer, god of light and god of good, is struggling for humanity against Adonai, the god of darkness and evil. Listen to the words of 33rd degree Mason Manley P. Hall. When the Mason learns that the key to the warrior on the block is the proper application of the dynamo living power, he has learned the mystery of his craft. The seething energies of Lucifer are in his hands, and before he may step onward and upward, he must prove his ability to properly apply this energy. Of the literally millions of Masons worldwide, how many of them are actually aware of the true meaning of the Masonic symbols? The answer is very few. Since most Masons never go past the third degree of the Blue Lodge, the, the rank of Master Mason, the vast majority of them never discover what they're involved in. And they never will discover what Freemasonry is all about unless they venture into the higher levels of the Scottish Rite or the York Rite. In fact, they're not just ignorant, they're deliberately misled by their superiors in the Lodge. In the words of Masonry's own authority, Albert Pike, the blue degrees are but the outer court or portico of the temple. Part of the symbols are displayed there to the initiate, but he is intentionally misled by false interpretations. It is not intended that he shall understand them, but it is intended that he shall imagine that he understands them. Many Masons go through the first three degrees, become a master Mason, and they just quit there, thinking that this is just a nice fraternal organization. And they do not realize that their own leaders have consciously lied and deceived to them because they do not want them to know the true teachings of masonry. I went in there um, with all good intentions, um, thinking I was uh, entering to, you know, into a, a fraternity that, that was really interested in, in helping people. But... Um, now, I, I realize that in the lower echelons, in the lower degrees, uh, you don't realize what, what's happening. Well, the meaning of the Lodge and um, what it was about to me was a group of people who were out to help other people. And there were different things that you could see in the Lodge. The people were close together. They were bound by something. And I thought it was a... Christian organization. What made uh, one think that the uh, lodge was uh, a Christian place was the fact that I found people who were uh, members of the same church uh, to uh, which I belong, the Presbyterian Church in Canada, were members of the lodge, uh, members in prominent positions in the lodge. And the fact that these members uh, in their rituals used uh, quotations from scripture uh, sort of doubly made one think that it was okay. They think that they are actually being initiated into a Christian organization. And it's because the three degrees in, in the Blue Lodge are veiled in a, in a veneer of Christianity. Jesus Christ is central to the Christian faith. In fact, without him there is no Christianity. That is because Christ claimed to be God incarnate. And as such, Christ cannot be separated from his teachings. He did not teach a system of morality to lead one to God. Instead, he claimed to be the way to the Father. But what is the official Masonic teaching about Jesus Christ? Listen again to Supreme Pontiff of Scottish Rite Freemasonry, Albert Pike. It, Masonry, reverences all the great reformers. It sees in Moses, the lawgiver of the Jews, in Confucius and Zoroaster, in Jesus of Nazareth, and in the Arabian iconoclast, great teachers of morality and eminent reformers, if no more. In other words, Jesus Christ is reduced to being a great reformer, no different than Confucius or Zoroaster. But the Bible says plainly in Acts chapter 4, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, 
whereby we must be saved. The very essence of Christianity is man's inability to save himself. For this cause, God sent his only begotten son to die on the cross and make atonement for us. How different this is from the teaching of Manley Hall in his book, The Lost Keys of Freemasonry. The true Mason is not creed bound. He realizes with the divine illumination of his lodge that as a Mason, his religion must be universal. Christ, Buddha, or Muhammad, the name means little, for he recognizes only the light and not the light bearer. He worships at every shrine, bows before every altar, whether in temple, mosque, pagoda, cathedral, and realizes with his true understanding the oneness of all spiritual truths. No true mason can be narrow, for his lodge is the divine expression of all broadness. No true mason can be narrow, for his lodge is the divine expression of all broadness. An interesting statement, since in the Bible Jesus Christ says, Broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. When Masons say that Jesus Christ is simply another great moral teacher, another great moral prophet, uh, equal with Buddha. In fact, Masons teach, according to Albert Pike, that Buddha was the first great Masonic teacher. So they're equating Jesus with Buddha, with Muhammad, with the religious leaders as just another religious leader. He is not God. He is not the incarnate Savior who came to save men from their sins because Masons do not need a Savior. Masons feel they can save themselves through moral good deeds. In the lodge that I belong to, we had a Muslim apply for membership. And the membership of our lodge didn't know how to initiate him because we knew we couldn't initiate him on the Holy Bible. So uh, we wrote a letter to the Grand Lodge of Alberta asking them for instruction. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, a letter came back stating that we should place the Koran and the square and compass beside the Bible and the square and compass on the altar and initiate him with full honors. Bible-believing Christians accept the fact that God exists in a trinity of three persons, that is, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But what most people, including many Masons, don't realize is that the God of Freemasons the great architect of the universe, is also a trinity. In both the Scottish and York Rite, you discover that Masons are on a journey seeking to find the lost name of God. Part of their religion, they say, is that uh, the sacred name of God has been lost. And they tell this whole story of the building of Solomon's temple and the architect, Hiram of Biff, uh, who, in building the temple, lost the sacred name of God. And so they say that Masons are on this search to recover the, the lost name of God. And finally, when you get to the Royal Arch degree, the Mason is finally told what the secret name of God is that only Masons can know. And they pride themselves that they alone are the custodians of the secret name of God. And that name can only be whispered among Masons by three Masons, each saying a syllable. The name is Jobulon. It is a combination of three words, Jehovah, Baal, and Osiris, the Egyptian sun god. Yah, Baal, On. Yah, Baal, On. Yah, And what a mason is worshipping in the Masonic Lodge is a three-headed god made up of Jehovah, Baal, which was the fertility god of Baalbek in Lebanon, and Osiris, the Egyptian sun god, represented by the phallic symbol, uh, uh, the sexual... Uh, worship in Egypt and they have combined this into a three-headed monster and say that is the Masonic God they worship. Salvation to the Christian is based entirely upon the vicarious sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross. The Bible teaches that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. It teaches that no matter how hard we work to be good we can never attain to the standards of the sinless Almighty. But God gives the free gift of eternal life to those who believe in Jesus Christ and allow him to pay for their sins on his cross. In the words of John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Salvation to the Mason is something entirely different. Masons are counting on their own good works, something that the Bible says cannot possibly save them. In fact, the Masonic Monitor teaches that God, the all-seeing eye, 
will reward men according to